So welcome back, guys, to in Into the Infinity-Verse, where I go behind the scenes and kind of talk about certain aspects of the Infinity-Verse. And today I'm going to be talking about a certain character that a lot of people were like, really, that character is a major role in the Infinity-Verse? Really? Even, ad admittedly, um, Jason, when I threw out the idea of making this character a major role in the Infinity League, he was like, okay, dude, I trust you. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this, but I trust you. And that character is Shizau. Now, Shizau came from a cartoon of the same name, where a young boy named Guy Hamden, after his aunt dies, is gets the ring and becomes Shizau, where he becomes a female superhero. Still a dude under all the costume, but still. Like, um, you probably probably don't remember the cartoon itself, but you guys probably remember the controversy that it, it caused of, oh, it's a dude who's really a, a, who's a superhero chick, it's a transvestite superhero. And while the show never really played on that, you can obviously see there are like some elements of that in there. So in the so yeah. Now in the Infinity Verse, uh, the big shared fanfiction universe that me and Jason have been creating, Shizau is one of the first um, superheroes to join the Infinity League. Um, she is also one of the original set. She is also one of the seven leaders of the Infinity League who. Uh, help guide and control the League's actions. Uh, but here's the thing. Nobody outside of his sister and his friend Maz know, and the AI uh, Sheila, who is in, the con in our continuity, is currently uploaded into the uh, base of the orbital base of the Infinity League Skyward Tower. They're the only three people who know that it's re uh, Shizau's really a guy named well, Guy. His name is Guy. So, Guy is, um, he's kept his identity really close to the chest. He's kept his identity, um, and he pretends to be a girl. He pretends, he, that's, because, um, the League doesn't make you give up your secret identity. So everyone thinks she's out as a girl, and he wants to keep it that way because he knows that if word gets out that he be, um, that he's really a, that he's really a dude under that, he is gonna get so much flack for, from the media, and it's going to damp. He's more concerned about the league's identity, you know, the league's um, identity um, than his own, because he's like, yeah, if I get if I get found out, then it's not going to be much of a problem. But if, if the league gets caught up in it, that's a prop. That's equally a problem. What's also equally a problem for She's Out at the moment is that if you guys have been, haven't been reading, She's Out is currently dating. Um, he's currently in a relationship with uh, Heidi from Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja, who is on the staff for uh, the PR department for the League, because I feel like, yeah, why don't superheroes have uh, PR departments? Because you could kind of need someone to talk about, uh, talk to the press personally when uh, shit goes wrong. <laughs> so, yes, and funny enough, uh, in this continuity, uh, Kelly, his, sis his twin sister, does run the... PR department, and Heidi is now a part of it, um, so that was the big thing, and he's also dating her, it's very much like a Superman-Lois Lane kind of relationship between the two, but he's also keeping his identity from her, and yeah, Heidi in this continuity, because I never really touched on her, her uh, sexual preference, I just kind of wrote, it was free game really, and everyone kind of writes um, in fanfiction, Heidi is bisexual anyway, I just wrote Heidi is bisexual. You may be thinking, oh, well, if he find if she finds out his identity is she's out, then it's not going to be much of a problem. That actually is going to be the problem, because it's not like, oh, you're really a dude, I'm kind of with that. It's more like, no, you fucking lied to me all this time, and I was in love with a woman, not a dude. So, uh, fuck you. That's what it, that's what he know, a guy knows is going to happen, is that if he ever revealed his identity to her, um, to Heidi, it's all going to come crashing down, because it doesn't matter if she likes girls and guys. What matters is that he uh, that sh he lied to her face, and she was in love with Shizau, who she thought was a woman. Not only that, is that guy's kind of going through a gender through a gender identity crisis at the moment. If you guys didn't read the Jazz uh, Spotlight in Infinity in um, in the Infinity League Spotlights, um, in that storyline, guy touches on that he's become more feminine. He feels like he he feels more free as she's out, and that was what I really wanted to convey, is that, you know, we had this story of this dude who becomes a female superhero, and he gets more in touch with his more femininity, femininity can't talk, um, and through that, he basically is, in this storyline, I'm really touching on that, that he's really becoming more in touch with his feminine side, he's actually, 
um, commits to, yeah, I, I kind of want to cross-dress and all that, so he's not, and also, and I think a lot of people forget, don't understand this, is that um, cross-dressing does not mean homosexual. That, um, and you may be thinking, well, how do you know so well? I actually do have a few friends who, um, who are gender fluid and do cross dress. I do have several, a few friends actually, a lot of them in high school. The point being is that a lot of them have told me just because we, you know, put on different clothes or what have you, that doesn't mean that we're we prefer the other sex. We, you know, we prefer that we don't prefer the same sex. We often prefer the the same sex. Yeah, it's just kind of you know that was kind of a thing that um, I found interesting that. Um, Cross-dressing does not equal homosexuality, and that was something I wanted to do with um, with the Shizou character. Is that yeah, even though he does, he is very feminine, and he's getting more in touch with that kind of gender. Um, he's also still like yeah, I still like girls, and I still like to keep some of my masculinity, uh, but he's willing to let go of that. Now the other thing is that his power set, because Shizou in the cartoon is kind of OP. And yeah, she is pretty powerful in this continuity too. There's actually, I wanted to play around with some of the continuity in here. Um, there's some of the storyline. Now for those who don't know, Shizou has a ring that is passed down from aunt to niece. And Shizou has a ton of powers that I could list through. But how I kind of explain that why Shizou has such a vast array of powers is that the ring kind it, um, does two things. Well actually it's three things. In this storyline, because they never really explain the origin of the ring, the Shizou ring, I actually bait in this version, I based it on that it's like the Alan Scott Green Lantern ring, where it's a mystical space. It is still mystical, but it's also from space. And the ring actually unlocks the wearer's metagene. And from there, it not only, it not only unlocks it, but also saves it um, saves its wearer's DNA and passes along that metahuman power to the next Shizou. So, like, one Shizou um, had the ability to... Um, had the ability to run it, to have superhuman speed. Well, now that person gets it too, along with their power, and so on and so forth. So, in the show, we find out that Guy unlocks the ability to talk to birds. So, when he, you know, when he says, hey, I'm, whenever I pass on the ring to someone else, I, you know, that person's going to get that power to talk to birds as well, and they'll unlock an ability, and so on and so forth. So that was kind of the fun idea. Is like, yeah, they never really talked about the origin of the ring. They just said it was magic. What if I made it? So yeah, a lot of the inspiration for the ring actually came from the uh, Alan Scott Green Lantern ring. So that was one. Of, that was kind of the major idea for it. But yeah, I was kind of so yeah. Um, Shizou does have a lot of like comedic elements, and I do like the show, but it never really touched on the mythos. So that's what I really so. And I know what you're, what you're thinking. You're saying a lot of I, Zilla. Why is that? Well, mostly because it was my idea to bring Shizou into the into the fold, and um, I was kind of like, hey, I got all these ideas for the character, and it's kind of fun to play with this universe. And Jason was like, yeah, sure, go uh, go ahead. That's kind of the thing is that. I'm kind of writing this character as my own, and it's so weird. Out of all, like, um, I'm kind of doing all the world building with this female character. Um, but not to say Jason isn't either. Um, Jason just doesn't have a lot of time to play with all the characters. But this was the one I was like, yeah, there's a lot I want to do here, and I real, I kind of want to expand on here and again. So I was like, yeah, sure. And it's always like fun to do to have a to have a character that doesn't have a lot of background, so you can really play in fan fiction. Uh, all the stuff, and now that the show isn't coming back, there isn't really stuff, a lot of things that can be, you know, counter, can be uh, countered, really. So, yeah. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much all the fun I had with the character of Shizou. Making her a little more complex, because, yeah, it was kind of one dimension. As much as I like the show, it's a little one-dimensional. It's fun! It's a fun superhero show, and we don't get a lot of fun superhero shows, but I thought, you know what? It'd be just kind of fun to, do to deal with a... Um, take this kind of one-dimensional character and really play with some new aspects and some new lore. Um, Grant Morrison the shit out of it. <laughs> I realized, like, yeah, that was kind of like, I'm Grant Morrison the shit out of this character who was meant to be a joke. So, yeah. So, there you go, guys. Uh, you guys tell me, what do you guys think of these ideas? Do you guys like them? Hate them? Uh, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you want to check out the Infinity Verse, uh, I'll leave a link below to the New Frontier, which is the storyline that kicks off everything. And I will see you guys later.